Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and in this video we are going to be taking a look at the updates made to Unity version 5.6.2. Version 5.6.2 was released on June 21st, so it has been out for almost three weeks now, giving us plenty of time to check it out and do some initial testing. Now, we are going to approach this video like we did in the video for the 5.6.1 release and cover the improvements made, the changes made, and cover some of the high points of the fixes made in this version of Unity 3D. So let's start with the really exciting stuff first, which is of course the improvements made. Now for Android, Neon was enabled for Umbra. For animation, we now have optimized evaluations of complex blend trees and blend trees with empty nodes. For graphics, Unity added in a couple of texture formats and render texture formats. A general update that was made improved the performance of the outline editor module in the sprite editor window. For iOS, Unity added in support for the fifth generation of iPads. For networking, Unity added in a timeout property to Unity web requests. Now for Physics 2D, Unity changed sprite renderers sprite tiling behavior when the width or height is a negative value and they updated Box Collider 2D sprite tiling generation to produce cleaner shapes. Moving on to UI, the canvas renderer on transform changed will not be called when an object is inactive. Now we actually have two updates for video as well. Unity optimized video decoding directly into render texture if it is the same size as the video stream, and they made improvements to the skip ahead functionality. For VR, Unity updated Oculus to version 1.14. Okay, that covers all of the improvements made in this version of Unity. Now let's move on to the changes. There are only two of them, so this should be fairly quick. And both of the changes here actually deal with global illumination in Unity. For the first one, Unity added in support for level of detail baking in the progressive light mapper. The second change that Unity made adds in support for double sided materials in the progressive light mapper. Now let's cover some of the fixes. We like to primarily cover the fixes for crashes along with some of the fixes th that deal with major bugs. For 2D, Unity fixed an error where the sprite packer could cause an out of memory error. For AI, Unity fixed a crash happening when the warp function was called many times for NavMesh agent. Now let's move on to Android. The first fix we're gonna cover here was a fix for the build pipeline that was causing slow loading with OBB. Unity also dropped obscured touch events to prevent tap jacking, which is really important. And the last one we're gonna cover for Android is that Unity fixed an out of memory crash when using a static splash screen. Now we're gonna move on to animation. Unity fixed a crash when loading an asset bundle with an override animator controller, and they fixed animation root motion layering. For the build pipeline, Unity fixed a crash when building a project containing materials with missing shaders, and they fixed an issue with scene asset bundles that would cause multiple builds with the same scene to generate different results. So that's pretty important because we definitely don't want to have different results showing up. For the editor, Unity fixed an issue where the editor would go unresponsive and the text would turn red. They don't really say what was causing the issue, just that they fixed it, but as long as they fixed it, I'm cool with it. They also fixed an issue where the color picker would crash on metal. They implemented a fix to prevent crashes in the editor due to UI and animations. And the final one we're going to cover for the editor is they fixed an issue where the profiler would crash when the active frame was out of view. Now we're going to move down to the global illumination. Unity fixed a crash when creating reflection probes from on will render object. And they fixed an issue where a certain combination of GI settings and multiple scenes being additively loaded would make baked light maps vanish. That one's really important there because we definitely want our light maps in our scenes. Now let's move on to graphics. Okay, for the graphics, Unity fixed a crash and error when attempting to set color surface as depth render target or vice versa. They also fixed a crash in Draw Mesh Now. Another crash was fixed in Graphics.Blit. Unity also fixed the crash that occurred when Texture.GetPixels or Texture.SetPixels were used with invalid input parameters. They fixed a crash when Mesh was removed from Mesh Renderer on an object with a cloth component. And the final one we're going to cover here is that they fixed Mesh and Memory Leaks when the Profiler window was open. So that's a pretty w important one if you want to do some debugging on your game. The Profiler window really helps out a lot. Now we're actually going to skip down a little bit and go to Mono. Now for Mono, Unity corrected a crash in the C-sharp compiler when two or more overloaded operators were used in the same statement. And they are preventing an intermittent crash in Unity 
when the managed debugger is attached. So both of those are actually fairly important. So now we're actually going to move on to particles. In particles, Unity is preventing an intermittent crash in Unity when the managed debugger is attached. So that kind of ties in with one of the mono fixes. And Unity fixed an occasional crash when emitting from a skinned mesh renderer shape. The final one we're going to cover for particles here is that they fixed a performance regression causing update jobs to be dispatched slowly on some platforms. Now let's move on to physics. For physics, Unity fixed a crash that happened when continuously scaling a mesh collider while activating and deactivating it at the same time. I'm not really sure why someone would do that, but I'm glad that they fixed it. They also fixed a crash that occurred while updating active skinned meshes and fixed a crash when removing a composite collider 2D. Final one we're going to cover for physics is Unity fixed a crash where contacts for collider 2D 2D were not deleted correctly. Now we're going to move on to the UGUI. There's only one fix here. They fixed crash issues when reparenting inactive game objects. So now let's move on to video. We've got two we want to cover in video. The first one is that Unity fixed an intermittent crash to load video tracks on iOS, and they fixed a crash on Samsung Android devices with 4.1 OS when stopping playback. We actually got a comment on one of our videos regarding some issues with a Samsung tablet in video playback, so hopefully this has fixed that issue. Now the final one we're going to cover actually deals with VR and Unity fixed an iOS crash in set texture with Google VR SDK 1.2. Okay coders, those were a lot of major issues that we noticed while reading through the page on Unity's website. I will be sure to link to the page on Unity's website that covers all of the fixes that were made for this new update. We are also working on a new video for the upcoming release of 2017.1, which we are really excited about. We honestly think that version 2017.1 one is going to be huge in the industry and an absolute game changer for Unity, so we are really, really excited about it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It helps us to continue making great content for you coders. And as always, thanks for watching.